Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to have a look at a beer from another brewery that I've never tried anything from before. So as I've told you in previous reviews, there's somewhere in the region of 750 little Swedish craft breweries these days. And one of the reasons that there's so many of them is that there's been a very strong home brewing culture here for a long time because of how strict the alcohol laws have been. And many of these home brewers, of course, end up turning commitment commercial but to survive as a commercial brewery you've got to have a very high standard of beer and that means that you can find some real gems amongst these very small and relatively unknown Swedish breweries so I always enjoy introducing these breweries to you here on the channel but uh, yeah it's one of these smaller breweries that we're going to have a look at today we're going to head quite a bit north for this review to Sundsvall which is about halfway up the east coast of Sweden Sweden's a deceptively long country actually when you look at it a little bit more closely but um, yeah this one I think could be quite interesting so we're going to have a look at my first beer from Noisy Bastards Brewing Company this particular beer is called Luscious Lou it comes in at 5.3% ABV and this one is an IPA exactly what type of IPA it is I'm not 100% sure but I'm sure we'll be able to figure that out when we have a taste of it but uh, yeah, this is one of two beers that you'll see me review from these guys over the next little while. So yeah, looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. Hopefully it's another good beer and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one. Always nice to introduce very small and new Swedish breweries here on the channel. A special shout out and thank you in this review to Håkan, who very kindly sent me these beers down from Sundsvall. It's been, these reviews have been delayed quite a little bit actually, so I do apologize to Håkan for that. But, um, you know, first off, I couldn't find information on the breweries. I wrote to them. They took a little bit of time to get that information to me and then I ended up with a, a load of work, both from university and from work itself. So I just, you know, ended up not getting around to these ones and they kind of got pushed to the back of the fridge a little bit so I'm glad that I'm finally getting around to reviewing these beers for you but he sent me three or four different beers from uh, the Sundsvall area so you will see these appearing over the next little while for sure but make sure you check out Hokian on Instagram his handle is six as in the number a uh, long street beer seller and he's got some really nice pictures there massive beer geek and again it's really cool to have followers like him who help me review some of their local beers so Hokian big thank you to you for making this review and the other Sundsvall reviews possible. So uh, yeah, I'll put the link to his Instagram in the, uh, the video description for you below as well. That probably makes it a little bit easier. But yeah, let's crack on with this review then and see how we get on. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Noisy Bastards Brewing Company. I do have one more of their beers that you'll see at some point fairly soon but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefetch or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about the brewery. So Noisy Bastards Brewing, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Sundsvall, about halfway up the Swedish East Coast. And the company was founded back in 2018 and released their first beers in 2019. But the two founders of the brewery are Ayla Yavazal, and Ola Grote and they apparently got into beer while they were living in England and there Isla was working as a drama teacher while Ola was working as a sound and lighting engineer and when they returned to Sweden they continued this work and they worked with disabled kids and adults but the other thing was that when they came back to Sweden they found that the beer selection just wasn't what they were used to compared to what they had in England so they decided to fix that by brewing their own beer so they're both self-taught and they basically learned from a lot of different books over the last kind of 15 years or so and they say that they enjoy IPAs, Imperial Stouts, and more recently they've been getting very into their sour beers. But at the moment they're producing around 10 to 15,000 litres of beer per year, but this will increase quite soon because they've secured a new 1,000 litre brew kit. So probably their output over 2021 will be a little bit more depending on how things are going 
with the whole COVID pandemic, of course. But they also run a home brewing supply shop and a full cool shop as well. For those of you who don't know and are watching from abroad, full cool in Sweden is a beer that is 3.5% and below. That means it can be sold in the supermarket rather than the state owned monopoly stores, the system bolagets. But uh, they also had a pop up bar in Sundsvall as well. And this was selling the full cool and uh, the non alcoholic beer. And it went very, very well. And they were planning to establish this properly. But then the COVID-19 pandemic hit. So that is going to be delayed a little bit. So hopefully that turns out um, they can fix that up maybe next year or something like that. It would be really cool to see them do that. Maybe I can go and visit it when I make it up to Sundsvall, of course. But as of April 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 16 different beers. There's a fair few different styles in there. But like I said, these guys are a very kind of small scale brewery and, you know, they're just tinkering and experimenting with lots of different things. And that's kind of what you would expect if they're a, if they've got a home brewing shop as well. But uh, yeah, the name, of course, is taken from the fact that these guys had worked in, you know, productions and things like this, you know, noisy bastards. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of derived from that, the whole uh, performances and sound and lighting engineering and stuff like that but yeah that's all I can really tell you about Noisy Bastards Brewing for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um, yeah let's crack on with this one then and see how we go so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this before we open up there you can see it is pretty cool actually I have to say it reminds it's a little bit Tim Burton-esque almost but yeah maybe just a slightly different style but same sort of vibe I guess we could say there you can see on the side this is the Noisy Bastards Brewing Company so it's a paper label this and the, the bottle is sweating a little bit after we've taken it out of the fridge but uh, it says on the side here, welcome to the world of Noisy Bastards Brewing Company. You're now holding an IPA brewed with love, caring and a huge amount of tropical hops. Stay noisy, always brew beer and never stop the beer revolution. So, um, yeah, looks pretty cool, actually. Um, plain black bottle cap on this one, 330 milliliter bottle. But um, yeah, looks very nice. And again, a huge thank you to Hokkien for making this review possible. So um, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. A 5.3% uh, IPA of some description. It says it's got wheat in it. So malty barley, malty wheat. Maybe, maybe it'll be more of a West Coaster. Don't know, we'll figure that out when we taste it. But yeah, the Luscious Lou, 5.3% ABV from Noisy Bastards Brewing Company in Sundsvall on the east coast of Sweden. Let's get this guy out and into the glass. Yes. Oh, it smells nice. It does smell quite nice. Ah, yeah, we're getting a wee bit ahead on this one. This beer has been sitting in the fridge for a little bit. I will tell you, you know, it probably is not in its prime. I won't, because as I say, they got pushed, the, the beers that Hokkien sent me kind of got pushed to the back of the fridge by other things. But yeah, it's just nice to be getting them out here just now. But um, yeah, it was pretty nice. So as you can see, the head on this one is a little bit bigger, just probably because it's bottle conditioned, obviously, and it's been sitting for a little while. But that's a lovely finger and a half of a frothy, I would say, cream coloured head on this one. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass in this beer, a few little ones going up towards the, the bottom of that head there, but you can see the head is just starting to kind of calm down a little bit. But uh, yeah, in terms of colour, this beer is pretty crystal clear, and I would describe that as just quite a rich yellow. It actually looks a little bit like a kind of Pilsner or something, to be honest with you, but you can smell when you open this beer up, you can smell the hoppy characters coming out of this one. But it looks very, very nice. Um, there is a wee tiny hint of a natural haze to this one, and you can see little bits of particle and sediment kind of floating around. But um, otherwise, pretty clear. This one is pretty damn clear. So um, yeah, nothing too untoward about the appearance of this one, apart from just exactly how clear it is. But then again, there isn't actually, there's not actually so much sediment sitting on the bottom of that bottle there. So maybe it is just clear. So if it's clear, that might indicate that it's more likely to be a West Coaster um, rather than anything else. But yeah, lovely looking beer, this one. Nothing madly surprising about its appearance. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on. This one should be interesting. Oh, that does smell quite nice, actually. So, um, 
it's still in pretty damn good condition going by the aroma actually um yeah so the multi base of this one we'll do it as we always do malt green component then fruits so the multi base of this one i think is quite nice um you can smell a lovely sort of smooth um you can smell a lovely sort of smooth white bready element out of this one um so yeah there's a lovely smooth sort of white bready character uh coming out of this one which is um which which kind of forms the backbone of the beer if you like there's a wee bit of a sort of bread crusty element in there um and you can smell there's a wee touch of almost bitiness from the wheat in this but the wheat really has more of a kind of smoothening effect and kind of boosts the sort of white bready elements you get out of this one um so yeah at the back of the nose you get a wee bit of the wheat as i say but then you've got a lovely smooth just um white bready character a little bit of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing going on and there's a few wee brown sugary elements in there as well i mean there's a wee bit of a kind of there is a touch of a sweet caramel to it there's a wee bit of a more kind of biscuity mcvitie's digestive sort of thing um but um yeah it smells interesting i do think it's maybe a bit of german malt and i wouldn't be surprised if there's a wee bit of like a maris otter or something in this one um there's just something about the aroma in this it's got as you smell more of it it gives you a little bit of a kind of brown bready element so i would not be surprised if there's a wee bit of a a Maris Otter uh, going on in this one and you know potentially a little bit of a Munich malt in the backbone as well there's something a wee bit German about it and a wee bit English so yeah food for thought with this beer definitely so yeah white bready backbone a little bit of bread crust in there as you kind of get further into the aroma you get a wee touch of a kind of wholemealy bready sort of thing some sweet caramel in there wee bit of biscuit and you can also smell <coughs> pardon me a little bit of um of bitiness from the wheat as well but yeah on the uh, the hoppy side of things then so green component for me in this one there's a teeny little bit of earthiness in this one absolutely you get a nice floral aromaticity out of it. i wouldn't say it's madly pungent in terms of um floral aromaticity and it's not overly spicy either it feels like a more kind of deep um floral aromatic note that you're getting out of this one but um yeah it certainly works for it um but on the grassy side of things it does have a wee bit of there's a wee touch of zestiness to this um to this beer for me you do get a wee bit of a grassy zestiness out of this one but um yeah it doesn't smell as if it's going to be a crazily bitter um ipa this one but again remember i've had this beer a little bit so potentially some of the bitterness might have dropped off with this one we need to keep that in mind but um yeah it still smells as if it's in nice condition as it stands but um yeah the green component of this one is pretty nice little touch of earthiness some nice deep floral aromaticity to it and a little bit of a grassy zesty character so all things that you would kind of expect from it uh, from an ipa going by the aroma of this one i feel that this might be a slightly you know a kind of lower bitterness modern take on the west coast ipa that's the sort of vibe i'm getting from this one um but yeah on the fruity side of things it is quite um it's quite interesting actually there are a few things going on here so i do get a little bit of uh there's a bit of a kind of oily mango out of this one for sure some kind of pineapple elements as well um i'm a bit confused i don't know what hops it would be that would be in this one i'm a bit confused as to what it could actually be i always like playing guess the hops with these beers of course but you know it's getting increasingly difficult these days because of all the different hop varieties that are out there but um yeah the fruity side of this beer is quite interesting it's got a good balance between the tropical side of things and it's got a wee bit of a kind of citrusy zest to it as well so for me like i said there's a wee bit of a mangoey note to this one i do get a little bit of a lighter sort of apricot element underneath a wee bit of pineapple and i'm trying to figure out if there's a bit of a kind of i'm just wondering if there's a wee bit of a tangerine orange in there like a little bit of mosaic or something um, and there is for me there's a wee bit of a kind of lemon limey note to this one as well so something tells me with the lemon limey notes it could be a little bit of motueka or you know equinot would be the other one um or you know with the mango in there it could be a bit of citra um but yeah it really the, the the beer it starts off quite tropical for me and then it starts to lean a little bit more towards a kind of grassy citrusy side of things so yeah the aroma of this beer is 
pretty interesting, I have to say. It smells to me as if this beer is going to be like a, a West Coast, like a more modern take on the West Coast IPA with a lower bitterness. So, um, yeah, just take a little bit of time and ponder over the aroma of this beer before you get stuck into it. I think this one is, uh, this one could be, could be really nice. So, yeah, let's crack into this one then and see how we get on. So, this is the Luscious Lou, a 5.3% IPA from Noisy Bastards Brewing Company in Sundsvall and uh, about halfway up the east coast of, uh, of Sweden. Thank you again to Håkan for making this review possible and you see a few more of his beers appearing over the next little while. But yeah, let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah, absolutely more of a West Coast IPA, this one, and it does have a wee bit more bitterness to it in the flavour than, than it would reveal in the aroma, actually, but, yeah, it's not, it's it's slightly less bitter than some of the, the kind of old school West Coast that you're going to come across, but that is pretty solid, I mean, as I say, this beer is not at its freshest at the moment, and that's my fault, but it still gives a very good account of itself, so, yeah, this is nice, thumbs up to Noisy Bastards Brewing Company for this, absolutely. Yeah, the malt base is nice, the green component works, and the fruity side of things holds itself together as well. But stylistically, this is definitely, it's definitely a West Coast IPA, this one. No doubt in my mind about that. Um, and the bitterness actually does build up in this one a wee bit the more that you drink of it. So um, yeah, this is this is very nicely done actually. So yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to the other beer that we've got from these guys because it's at the opposite end of the spectrum. As I always say, when you try different beers or you try new breweries, you want to get something from the light end and something from the dark end of the spectrum. So yeah, now we've got our lighter beer with uh, with this brewery for sure. But um, yeah, thumbs up to them for this. Let's try and break down the flavour a bit more and describe it properly then. So yeah, um, straight away with this beer, you can feel a nice little bit of that kind of smooth, white bready quality, just blanket in the middle of your tongue. That forms the backbone of the beer, so middle third of your palate. If you go towards the back, of that middle third of your tongue, you get a wee bit of a kind of bread crusty element there. And as you move, um, as you move further forward into the, the front half, you get it on the kind of front edge of the tongue too. But a nice, smooth, white bready element sitting in this beer for sure. As you progress further into the aftertaste, the beer does develop a little bit of an almost wholemeal bready type quality to it, which I think is um, is really interesting, definitely. And yeah, I do wonder if there's a wee bit of a, 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 there's just something that tells me there's Maris Otter in this beer. I could be wrong, but there is just something that's telling me there's a wee bit of the Maris Otter in this, because you get a wee bit of that brown bread, you know, in the way that some of the biscuity elements come out of this too, are just, um, are just really familiar. The beer does have a degree of crispness as well, like on the back half of that middle third of your palate, you get just a wee bit of a dryness to the beer. And that's sometimes an indicator that there's a wee bit of Pilsner malt in there. And it's it's quite a nice technique. There was quite a few breweries putting a bit of Pilsner malt in their New England IPAs here in Sweden. Um, over And that was maybe about two years ago or something now. But I like that. I did enjoy having that slight crispness to the beer. But yeah, you will notice on that back half, the middle third of your palate, this beer just gets a wee touch drier the further you go into the aftertaste. But in the dead centre of your palate, sitting on top of these kind of brown bready things, you do get a little bit of a kind of concentrated kind of brown sugar thing there. And as you move further out from that, it becomes a little bit more kind of biscuity and um, it becomes a wee bit more sort of biscuity and like digestive, McVitie's digestive like. So yeah. So yeah, the um, yeah the kind of the, the brown sugary elements that you get 
um, out of this one are, are quite nice. But as I say, just the, the type of biscuity notes that you get out of this. It could be aided by the Pilsner malt, of course, if that is in there. But yeah, there's definitely a, a bit of a sweeter concentrated brown sugar in there. As you move further out from that, it gets a wee bit more biscuity and caramelly. And then as you reach the very edges of the tongue, particularly towards the, the back of that middle third of your palate, it's... Um, it does have a bit of dryness to it, so I think a bit of Pilsner malt, a bit of Maris Otter, and maybe something else. The thing I said about Munich malt, just going from the flavours you get out of this one, I don't think so, because Munich malt will give you a lovely smoothness, whereas this the malt base is a little bit sort of clean, if that makes sense. It feels a little bit clean and creamy, but this beer does give you just that little touch of booziness that you would want from a, a West Coast IPA as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's very well done, this beer, actually, in a lot of ways. So um, yeah, if you want a properly kind of more old school West Coast IPA, then I think this one works, but it's got a wee bit of the English vibe to it and a wee bit of a, a kind of German thing as well. So yeah, I like this. I do like this one. But yeah, um, on to the back third of your palate then. So on that border region between mid third and back third of your palate, you get a wee, little bit of a slightly thicker bready note in there, a wee bit of a kind of grainy note to it. And then on the back, um, on the back third of your palate there's a little bit of a smoother kind of element there you can feel a little bit of a smoother white bread there and a wee bit of wheaty bitiness at the very back of the palate but sitting on top of that back third of your tongue you can feel just a little bit of the yeasty note kind of coming out so pardon me as you come from the back of your tongue moving forward you can feel the flavours gradually condense down a wee bit then as you move into the middle third of your palate they feel quite squashed together actually but this is a very clean and kind of crisp west coast ipa for me but it works it really does work onto the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate there is a good little touch of earthiness to this one as you move further forward the earthiness fades away quite quickly but this beer actually does have a wee bit of a kind of pine resiny sort of thing to it um and uh, you know it has a wee bit of a pine raisin -y sort of thing to it and a bit of floral aromaticity so I wonder could there be a wee bit of Chinook in this or but I think Columbus it has got a wee bit of the spiciness you'd expect of Columbus in it but there is a bit of depth to this one too so maybe Chinook and Columbus as the early edition hops in this one and remember that West Coast IPAs they are more dependent on um, you know having an early edition component as well because that's when you get all the bitterness there's a gradual trade-off over the course of your wort boil where um, in, the, in the early stages, if you add hops on, that's going to give you the bitterness. But as you go progressively through the wort boil, um, it tends to favour more. Um, it tends to favour a little bit more um, kind of flavour and aroma, if you like. But a, a West Coast IPA like this is going to have a boil of like 70 to 90 minutes, something like that. So, yeah, bear that in mind with this. The boil, the wort boil also affects the colour of your beer because it caramelises the sugars and things a little bit more. So, yeah. Wort boil is a very important time in the beer, beer brewing process. So, mm. but yeah, this beer for me, as I say, there's a little bit of a kind of floral, spicy note sitting on top. So maybe a wee bit of Columbus, but then underneath you've got a wee bit of the pine resin too. But round the front curve of the palate, a little bit of that floral note lingers there. But you've got a nice kind of grassy, slightly zesty quality coming out of this too. So that covers the green component for me. This beer does have a fair degree of bitterness to it. So I need to think about that exactly what the IBUs could be in this one. But um, yeah, on the front third of your palate then, let's look at the fruity side of things. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, there's a wee bit of a bready build up there and a bit of bread crust. And the base of that front third of your palate, there's a bit of a sort of smooth white bready element to it. So yeah. The, the, yeah, the front third of your palate actually goes together very, very nicely. I mean, sitting on top of that slight readiness, there's a nice oily, um, fruity component to it. So at the back of the front third of your palate, you do get a little bit of a wee passion fruity pungency. And as you move further forward beyond that, it mellows out a little bit. You get a juicy mango, maybe a wee hint of apricot and stuff in there. I think there's citra in this one. I'm pretty sure that citra is one of the hops in this. Um, and it feels a little bit familiar. So, I, I you know, as you move... Further forward from that, as I say, you get these softer tropical fruit notes, and I think there's a wee hint of a, uh, I think there's a wee hint of a kind of slightly orangey note on the front half of the front third of your tongue, and there's a few limey notes just sitting underneath that. So, yeah, um, front half of that front third of your tongue is a little bit more light, tangerine the orange, wee bit of lime in there, and uh, yeah, the bitterness and things, kind of 
it helps spur that one a wee bit. So I think Citra, a bit of Mosaic, and then I think Columbus is the bettering hop in this one. So yeah, maybe Citra Mosaic and Columbus in this. this. There's something quite familiar about this beer and it just feels quite old school in a lot of ways. But it certainly works and you can tell this is an absolutely solid West Coast um, IPA and I'm sure when it was in its prime freshness it would have been even better than it is but I think this is pretty damn solid actually. It's got everything you would want from the West Coast kind of sub style if you like. So thumbs up to um, to Noisy Bastards for this. It, it's worked out very very nicely and uh, Hokkien you picked me out a nice beer. I can see why you were keen for me to have a wee go at this one. So um, yeah absolutely. But yeah, on the the mouthfeel side of things, then I think we can round off the the tasting section of the video. There we've covered it quite um, quite in depth, I would say at this point. But yeah, um, in terms of the mouthfeel, it's straight in the middle of the spectrum, mid-bodied beer. Carbonation does have a wee bit of a prickle to it. You know, we saw from the head that's you know it's a bottle conditioned beer, so you are going to get a wee bit more in that. But it's not overly carbonated. Definitely not over carbonated at all. It's actually held up really well in that sense. But um, yeah, smooth carbonation to this one. This beer's got a nice kind of very, it's got a slight oiliness to it, which you expect from a West Coast IPA, but at the same time it comes across as quite clean. You know, up in Sunsville, you're going to get good water quality. Uh, absolutely. Um, but on the um, overall, it's just a, it's a really nice, clean, old school West Coast IPA for me, this one and that. You know, I always enjoy these kind of beers. But on the hoppy bitterness side of things, I think this is maybe a 70, 80 IBU beer. It could even be more than that. And remember, this is my weakest point of beer reviewing. This beer is not at its freshest as well, so that might skew things a bit. So it does have this beer does have a wee bit of a, a, a bitter kick to it, which I like. It strikes me as being a wee bit more sort of old school, which um, which, I, which I enjoy. I think a West Coast IPA has to have a bit of bitterness to it. Quite a lot of the modern uh, West Coast IPAs I tend to not enjoy quite as much because they lack that bitterness, but this one isn't holding back in that sense. The malt base for me has got a nice smoothness underneath it, a wee bit of a kind of sweet malty note and a little bit of booziness, which is, you know, you kind of want a little bit of that in the West Coast IPA. Then you've got a lovely oily and uh, juicy fruity quality to this beer too so um yeah i think we can round off the review there this is a solid solid west coast ipa for me hawkins picked me out a good beer and i'm curious to see what the other one from these guys has in store for us going forward too so um yeah let's finish it up there so this was the luscious Lou 5.3 percent west coast ipa from noisy bastards brewing company in sunsvall on the Swedish East Coast. It's uh, a really solid beer, this one. And I tell you something, for a 5.3 percenter, um, it just didn't pop into my head earlier, it's that this beer, for a 5.3 percenter, it does have a, a, a fair little bit of kick to it, actually. So the level of flavour you get out of this for a 5.3 percenter is pretty damn impressive too. We need to say that about this beer also. But yeah, the Luscious Lou, 5.3 percent West Coast IPA from Noisy Bastards Brewing Company in Sundsvall. Once again, thank you to Hokan for making this review possible. Do make sure you check out the link to his uh, Instagram uh, page in the comment section below and give him a follow. He's got some really nice photos in there. But yeah, uh, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Noisy Bastards Brewing as well. We will return to these guys fairly soon for a look at something from the dark end of the spectrum as well. And you know, do let me know some of the, the very small Swedish breweries that I haven't had a go of. I love introducing the small guys here uh, on the channel. And just, you know, it's, it's really cool to, to see how many breweries there are in Sweden these days. But thank you again for watching. Check out my social media. Check out Noisy Bastards Brewing Company. Check out Hokkien. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Slange it, skull, cheers. And check out this beer if you want a properly old school West Coast IPA. Cheers. <laughs>